You see how small this is? Hey YouTube, Danny here with DTC, taking a look at yet another mini ITX build. If this is your first time here, on this channel we talk about new PC hardware, do computer builds, and sometimes perform how-to videos. Today I'm building in the Inwin B1 Mini ITX case. This case really didn't get the attention I think it deserves because it came out in April of 2020, and we all know what happened then. So let's change that and check it out right now. Let's take a look at this case first. It is a micro ITX case, as I said, very small. I'll even put the dimensions up on the screen here for you. It comes in at 5.6 inches by 13.2 by 11.3. Like I said, it's really small. You can actually stand it up here. It's a very thin and narrow profile. Uh, it can be oriented up and down like this. You can take it off the base stand and you can orient it sideways for like an HTPC type of um, build if you wanna do something like that. It normally comes with feet on the bottom. I've already removed these so that I can orient it vertically. This is just the way I wanted to do it. Cool air comes in from the bottom here and then exhausts out the top or side to side if you have it oriented so. As I said, it's made for a ITX motherboard only. It will not fit a dedicated graphics card. There's no slots for it or anything, even though your motherboard will support a dedicated graphics card most likely, you will not be able to uh, orient one in the case. It doesn't have the room for it. The build quality is nice. It's made out of ABS plastic and then a tempered glass uh, front panel here or side panel, whatever you want to call it. The max CPU heatsink height is 60 millimeters. The front ports on the case are one USB 3.0 and one HD audio single plug port. The case also has two 2.5 inch internal drive bays for either the 2.5 SSDs or you can put hard disk drives in as well. It has a 80 millimeter exhaust fan included in the top here. And then it also comes with a Powerman 200 watt 80 plus gold power supply in the bottom. Okay, let's talk about the parts I'm using for this build. The first thing is the processor. It's the Ryzen 5 3400G. This is the highest end processor I could get right now for an APU. The Ryzen 4700G and 4600G, those are out, but you can't buy them commercially, so I'm not recommending them. I've seen them on eBay. You can actually buy the 4750G, but it's like three or $400, and I really don't even know the performance compared to this. It may not be much better than what this is now as far as like graphics wise and stuff. So. Um, this is the, the highest commercially grade processor you can get. Four cores, eight threads, Vega 11 graphics. It's, it's a good processor, great for this style of build. Secondly is the Gigabyte B450i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi motherboard, micro ITX board. Uh, like I said before, it has Wi-Fi built in, plenty of USB ports on the back. It has two HDMI out ports, a display port out. I, I mean, it, it's really a good board. As far as usability, it's got nice cooling for the VRMs and everything like that. So really, really a nice choice for this design. I've got 16 gigabytes of T-Force Vulcan Z RAM. This is running at 3000 megahertz. I didn't need to do anything over the top 4000 megahertz or anything like that. This is, this is plenty for what we're gonna be doing with this. And then finally for storage, I chose the Crucial P1 NVMe M.2 SSD. This is a 500 gigabyte drive. The board only has one M.2 slot. It has the little heat sink on the front, as you can see. And uh, then if I wanna add storage later, I can always plug in in the back, like I said, two uh, 2.5 inch drives for, for expansion. So that's pretty much it. Um, there's not, like I said, there's no graphics card or anything. I'm not adding any extra fans. This is a pretty simple design. So let's uh, take a look at the actual build montage.
And there you have it. Uh, all put together, everything went in real easily. It was actually super easy to build in. It only took me about 30 minutes or so to do the entire thing from getting my components together, throwing them into the case, buttoning everything back up, and starting it up on the test bench over here. It was actually, I'd say it was probably about as easy to build in as my desk mini that I did. So final thoughts on this thing, Talk, talking about the case, uh, what, I, what I thought about everything. The issues I had with it, I'll, I'll outline the issues first. Um, the thermals are not that great as far as using it as a high-end machine or anything like that. I ran Cinebench scores on it. It got decent numbers and everything like that, but the uh, temps got pretty warm. Now, Cinebench loads the CPU up to 100% all cores, but it did get to 90C during testing, and this top fan started spinning like crazy and really trying to exhaust the air. Now, Unigen Heaven, I ran benchmarks on that. Those temperatures got between 65 and 70, depending on what part of the graphics were rendering. Unigen Heaven was running low settings on everything, but it was 1080p, and uh, I mean, there's no graphics card in this, so the fact that it can even run that is impressive enough. If you try to run any kind of Intel tests on that, you will not be getting 60 frames a second at 1080p on anything on Intel integrated graphic. As far as using this for daily computing needs, the thing was whisper quiet. The CPU fan didn't ramp up hardly at all. The little top exhaust fan um, barely was noticed. So I, I was really impressed with using it as a daily computer and the fact that you can play light games and everything like that at 1080p if you want to is just a bonus to me. Another downside of it, when the fans ramp up, because the case is ABS plastic, it starts to vibrate. You can actually hear it like buzzing and um, when, when the fans are at like full speed trying to exhaust all that hot air. Like I said, during like Cinebench and stuff, it really didn't ramp up that much at all. And uh, daily computing, the fan was, was whisper quiet. So the only time you heard that type of stuff is if you were putting an intense load on this type of um, on the on the computer. Another thing I didn't really like is the tempered glass creates no ventilation for the CPU cooler. The CPU cooler being right here is very close to the glass. You can't use the Wraith Spire that comes with the 3400G. I actually used my Wraith Stealth that came with my 3200G. It's a, a slimmer profile, but it's almost, you can't see it with the tempered glass here, but it's almost smack up against where the glass meets. Um, there's only a few millimeters of uh, space for air to kind of curve around and come in through the CPU cooler. I'd recommend if you're going to run this daily and you want a game and stuff like that on it as like a, a portable PC or something, throw in the Noctua L9A. It's a slimmer profile. It's only 37 millimeters high and uh, it just does a really good job of cooling. I have it in my desk mini and you can, I'll leave a link about that video if you wanna check out the cooler and everything like that, but it would work for this build as well. Like I said, it's a great case as far as a small profile, um, HTPC or just a basic computing 
The reason I chose this over the Desk Mini, and if you're interested in the Desk Mini, um, I'll leave a link for that up here, down here, wherever, uh, that you can check out. It's a better price than what this is, but this has upgradeability. The Desk Mini really, you can just swap processors and RAM and stuff like that, but you're stuck with APU permanently. So for this build, I wanted to be able to do upgrades later to it. I can pull all these components out and put them in a bigger case, like the NZXT H1, and throw in a graphics card, and I've got like a comparable gaming PC as well. And this motherboard can hold CPUs all the way up to a 3950X if you wanted to. So yeah, you can really, the choices to upgrade this thing later are very uh, wide on the spectrum. So that pretty much does it for this review. I really enjoy building in it because it was very simple. It was something easy I can do. And it's got a lot of uses. I mean, you can take it, pick it up and put it in your backpack if you want to. You don't have to take the stand along with you, but I mean, this will fit in a backpack. And uh, it's got the upgrade ability later, like I said. There's a lot of room for expansion. And uh, for being so small, the cooling was actually quite adequate for, for what it has in it. If you enjoyed the video and want to check out more just like it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and turn on your bell so you'll know when the next video goes live. Speaking of subbing, I really want to just say thank you to everyone that's subscribed so far. It means a lot to me and it's what makes me want to keep going with these videos. So I'd like to keep that momentum going, giving you weekly content as much as I possibly can. I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you all in the next one. Make mistakes. Try.